trouble making my memory was getting worse when I talked to my mother and she said, oh no, your memory was always bad, you just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't forgotten the wonderful time that many of our students had last year about the same time with Kalani. It's a great opportunity for them. You're all aware that public speaking means speaking in public. The reason that I originally approached Mike Anderson from the college to see if we could do something like this was that our students learn how to speak to each other very well, very capably, very comfortably. But that's not the same thing as coming out into the community and speaking to you. So I'm sure you're going to learn from the four students we have today. They're some of our finest. Their supporters are here also. I want to thank all of the students for coming, but especially to thank Juanis for setting such a fine example of service and community and communicating in the world. Because I think there may very well be some people among our group today who will eventually become the one. Our first speaker is going to be Leah Aqua, who heard her mother say a few words already. Leah is going to be talking about something. I'm not going to tell you the topic immediately, other than that it does not have to do with home people. <laughs> Hear me, but you can put it on if you like. 
that's what it would look like. And you can see that it has a wire mesh over it, and there's also a bib that would protect it from getting struck underneath. So just in case the foil was to come up underneath the jacket, you can still be protected and not be hurt in the chin area too. Now, one of the most important parts of the fencing is the fencing foil. It consists of a blade and the hilt, which is the handle. The handle in this style is called a French handle. I can go ahead and pass that around actually if you want to see. What that is, is um, the French handles are a straight handle. There's also a form called a pistol grip, which is really interesting. It actually looks like the handle of a pistol, and it's used for orthopedic support. So uh, more mature fencers typically have a harder time holding a straight fencing gear. So that's a way that they can still grasp the foil at the same time. There's two other styles as well. One's called saber, which is what you would think of as a pirate or a swashbuckler. It has a curved arch to it. And then there's an epee, which I consider like the Superman version of the fencing, fencing foil. It's really interesting because that way, in epee, your entire body can be struck at the same time. So kind of anything goes in that style. So what I'm going to show you now is that we're going to get into the, the initial position. Some of you will be able to see that I'm going into a 90 degree angle right here. And you want to bend your legs at an equal distance and then go ahead and step forward. What that does is it gives you balance right here. And many of you will probably know the term on guard. Who knows on guard? Yeah, quite a few people. That's one of the major terms that people will recognize in fencing. What that would be is I would hold that foil that many of you have looked at already right here at a 45 degree angle. I would bring my arm back for balance and then I would step forward. That would be the way that you would acknowledge to other people how you're going to start a bout. Before that, you would salute everyone, you would salute your opponent, the judge, so in this case, like, Phil would be my judge, I would salute him, and then I would salute the audience to thank them for watching as well. From that, you would go ahead and advance because you want to get closer to your opponent. You would stay in the same position. It's a really good leg exercise because you're basically always standing and you're never standing upright. So if you ever want to get a really good leg workout, it's a great way to practice that way too. And one of the prime ways to strike an opponent would be to take your foil, extend it first, and then go into a lunge. What that does is it gives you the opportunity to strike an opponent that's at a further distance apart, and then you would come back into that. You kind of lunge. When you do that, it opens up a chance for you to be struck as well, but hopefully you're much quicker by that time while you're opening up your body, you've already struck your opponent. So that's one way to score. So something that I've always thought was really interesting is that it's great for balance. It's wonderful exercise for people of any age. And as you've seen, fencing has retained popularity through lots of centuries because it has a focus on form, technique, and strategy. You have learned the equipment that's been used, You've learned how to salute and a few introductory moves such as the unguard, the advance, and the lunge. I interviewed a man named Joe Jasper. He is the president of the Tacoma Metro Fencing Club. And during our interview, he told me a really interesting quote. He said that the sport that one chooses to compete in must be an outlet for their passion. Passion will drive you to excel. 